Hello and welcome to chapter 3 on describing relationships. In section 3.1 we're going to look at scatter plots and correlation. So in this section we're going to identify explanatory variables and response variables. Uh, the way we're going to remember this is these are the x variables or the y variables. We also look at those called the domain, advanced algebra, and our range values. We're going to make a scatter plot. That'll be something we'll learn uh, to do if it's a relationship between two quantitative variables. Two quantitative variables. We're going to describe the direction, the form, and the strength of a relationship, and also identify any outliers in that scatter plot. We'll learn about correlation and learn how to interpret correlation. And we'll understand the basic properties of the correlation, including how the correlation is influenced by outliers. We'll learn technology, so we'll have to use our calculator. We'll look at one of the calculator videos on how to calculate the correlation. And then we'll explain why association does not imply causation. That's kind of a key, key point in statistics. That's just because we have association does not imply we have causation. So let's uh, start with those explanatory and response variables. Um, and again, most statistical studies examine the data on more than one variable. Uh, many of the settings we have two variables play a very important role. So a response variable is measures an outcome of a study. So outcome, uh, again, that's our y values uh, in paired data. You know, so in paired data we've got coordinates like x, y. Uh, the explanatory variable may help explain or influence changes in response variable. So we kind of look at the word explain. You can actually see the letter X in there. That kind of way to remember it as well, too. Explain or explanatory variables. It's kind of a way to remember that. So again, in many studies, the goal is to show that changes in one or more explanatory variables actually cause changes in a response variable. But again, be careful of that. Be very, 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 very careful of that. Uh, just because we're looking for that cause doesn't mean that we have that relationship. Uh, there might be other explanatory response relationships uh, that don't involve direct causation. There might be some other lurking variables. Uh, so be careful about saying that one causes the other. Uh, it's a very hard proof to actually do. So we're going to take that paired data. We're going to take that XY data that explanatory response data. And we're going to learn to make a scatter plot. Okay. And again, a scatter plot shows the relationship between two quantitative variables measured on the same individuals. The values of one variable will appear on the horizontal axis. So we'll have on the horizontal axis our explanatory variables. And then on our y-axis we will have our response variables. It is different names for things that we've call, uh, talked about in the past. Again, our x-axis and our y-axis, um, our domain, and then our range. So uh, we'll have that paired data again, that x-y data. So we'll plot that on the graph as a little point. So we've got to decide which variable goes on each axis. So again, explanatory go on the x-axis. Always remember, please always remember to label and scale your axes. These are ones we're going to, we should be able to do by hand. Let me just plot those points. So once we make this scatter plot, we're going to learn how to describe it. And we're going to follow the basic strategies we've used in chapters 1 and 2 and look for important departures and patterns uh, uh, amongst the data and uh, talk about them. So again, look for that overall pattern. We're going to look for the overall pattern of our dots in our scatter plot, and then look for the, the striking departures. So what we're going to do in describing a scatter plot, um, just like before when we did uh, problems on, on uh, how to describe a distribution, we used our socks in describing a scatter plot. Uh, no mnemonic device for this one, but we're going to use direction, form, strength, 
And then as always, look for outliers as well too uh, in our scatter plots. So if we have two variables that have a, they'll have a positive association when above average values of one tend to accompany above average values of the other. Uh, so again, this would look like something like this. Is, uh, as they increase, as we get higher values in the explanatory variable, we get higher values in the uh, response variable. Two variables have a negative association. So if we look at negative association, we have above value, above average values of one tend to accompany below average values of another. So we'd have data that would look like this, is that we would have uh, in this situation here, we'd have points up here that have above average values in the y, uh, but below average values in the x. Okay. Here we'd have high points down here would be high or above average values in the x, but below average values in the y. So if I look at this data here, generally we want to see what that pattern kind of looks like. And if I kind of look at this, I kind of see a pattern that does something like that um, generally kind of follows that curved pattern. So in using those pieces from before, you know, we want to say that there's a, a moderately strong negative. Now when I say moderately strong, we're talking about how tight these dots are to that line. Uh, that they're all pretty close. Uh, it's pretty uh, obvious you can see a pattern there. So that's why I kind of use the word moderately uh, when I talk about uh, the strength of the relationship. So um, it's negative because we have generally have a downward trend that we have uh, above average values of one variable, like the x value here, uh, for below average values of like the y. Um, so this is a moderately strong negative curved relationship between the percent of students in a state who take the SAT and the mean SAT mass score. It looks like there are two, further describing there are kind of like two clusters. They got a cluster here We've got kind of a cluster there, and maybe two possible outcomes or out outliers. Uh, so probably looking at this guy right down here, and probably this one right there, and they're kind of out, outward from the pattern. So again, the strength, the direction, and the form. And so moderately strong for the strength, direction is negative, and the form is curved. So let's look at another one here. Okay. In this problem right here, in general, it appears that teams score more points per game have more wins, and teams that score fewer points have fewer wins. Well, that kind of makes sense. So we can say we have a positive association here. So if we have a look at that kind of pattern, we kind of see it here. Uh, kind of also think of slope as well, too, like in a line. This would have a positive slope if we're looking at the y equals mx plus b kind of line. Regards to the form, it does look pretty linear. It looks like a, uh, a line would fit that dot well. And there's strength, because the points don't vary too much. They're all pretty tight to that line right here. We could say it's uh, it's fairly strong or moderately strong. Okay. And furthermore, then I would identify if there's any outliers, and I really don't see any here. They're all pretty close. They're not really far away from the data. So there we go. That ends our first day on Lesson 3.1. Uh, so at this point, you should be able to go back and do some homework now. And you should be able to do uh, numbers 1, 5, 7, 11, and 13. All right. I wish you luck and end skill. We'll see you in the next video.